The Last Hours on Everest is really a detective story about Mount Everest and uh, who might have climbed it first. It's also a family history um, and a bit of a sort of uh, adventure book, really. I hope um, anyone would like it, not just a climber. Well, Everest was known as the third pole. The South Pole and the North Pole had been reached and here, here was Britain's chance to climb the, the highest mountain in the world. And all of these men had been through the, the world, the Great War, the World War I, and uh, this was really being climbed for Britain. It was very much a, a collective effort, whereas climbing Everest nowadays it tends to be more of a, an individual thing, a personal thing. And so, yes, uh, I, I would see this very much as um, the, the last gasp of the British Empire. Well, I was a boy of 12 when I met my relative, Howard Somerville, who must have been 80 or so there. And he told me this amazing story, um, not a few miles from here in Painswick, about he'd had a friend on Mount Everest, and then they'd made the first attempt to climb the mountain. And then his friend uh, had attempted to, to climb the mountain for the last time, and he said, oh, Howard, I forgot my camera. Can I borrow yours? And so uh, Howard gave him his camera and off George Mallory went uh, and disappeared forever. And Howard Somerville said to me, young man, if, if you could find that camera, you might prove that Mallory climbed Everest all those years before Hillary and Tenzing. For years, I, I believed that Mallory had climbed the mountain first with, with his friend uh, Sandy Irvin. And to that end, I started writing the book, trying to prove that they'd climbed it. But as the evidence mounted up, I realised more and more and more that uh, th that wasn't quite the way it was. And I had to really radically rethink my position. And uh, yes, it was upsetting to change my view, but I think it's very important to get to the truth of these things. And in a funny way, it was cathartic, the book. I had a lot of strong feelings, strong emotions about this, this mountain, how it possesses people. And I managed by writing the book to get that all out of my system. And oddly enough, it was just the process of writing that was cathartic, not necessarily needing to be published. So I'd, I'd say to anybody who's got any strong feelings about something like this, just write it down, get it down, and you will feel a catharsis. You don't need to publish, just write. What I admire about people like Mallory and Irvin is the spirit of adventure. Um, human beings are not particularly attractive in many ways, but I do admire the, the spirit of endeavour, the can-do, the, uh, the ability to really rough it and go through hell to try and achieve something you believe in. You know, Mallory actually was a very liberal man. He believed in liberal education and he was a schoolmaster. And, and mountain climbing was just ancillary to what he really believed in. And I think he thought that if he could climb Everest, he could make people listen to his other thing that he was, he was believing in. And I do admire that, although I think he became obsessed by the mountain and in the end it killed him. It's very interesting when you think about what the pioneers actually faced. It was much, much harder for them. They didn't know about what the route was. They didn't know about oxygen, uh, hydration. They didn't know how to organize pack animals and, and, and uh, short Sherpas. But I had a, a taste of this a couple of years ago. We tried to climb a mountain in Sikkim. Well, it was absolute hell. Uh, we spent three years trying to organize the, the permissions the, uh, the permits, the visas. Then we couldn't find enough yaks. Uh, we ran out of food, food and in the end we ended up climbing the wrong mountain. It was a complete disaster and I suddenly realized that this is what it's like for pioneers. We were trying something new and uh, it was tough. And I would say that the pioneers, it was very hard for them, but they did have that feeling of doing something new. And I would say once I climbed on a ridge, a mountain ridge, that no one had been on, and there's nothing quite like making the first human steps along a mountain ridge, knowing that no one's been there before, no one, no one human eye has seen those rocks. That's an amazing feeling, to be the first. I didn't realise until the book had been published and um, another uncle wrote to me, he said um, that was a very interesting autobiography. Uh, I hadn't realised, honestly, till that point, that this was actually a sort of life story. Um, 
And I was, I was uh, uh, you know, slightly taken aback because I didn't want it to be autobiographical. I just wanted this to be a detective story, adventure story, uh, a, a history and a biography of, of uh, this relative, Howard Somerville. But I realised, yes, of course, it was autobiographical to a degree. And um, I think, you know, that's up to the readers, but it maybe adds another level. When I wrote the book, I wanted it on the top level just to be adventure story. Second level, maybe a detective story. The third level, maybe a biography. The fourth level, maybe a science book. A fifth level, and very few have spotted this, a book about religion and the nature of belief. But I realised all along there was another thing going on, that, that it was autobiographical. So I'm offering you six books here for the price of one. After Everest, uh, there's always a bit of a question what to do next. Um, Edmund Hillary took up tractor driving across uh, the South Pole. Uh, various other climbers do various things. And I decided to take up sailing because it's at sea level and warm and comfortable, I thought. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun to try and do something no one, someone's never done before, which is um, to climb the seven summits and sail the seven seas. So it's uh, the highest mountain in each continent, and the seven seas are the seven oceans. And my next book, I hope, will be uh, about the seven seas and seven summits, and I hope to uh, complete that in about seven years, I suppose. But that's the challenge, no one's done it before, and uh, I'm very excited by it.